Start the new year right during the Xfinity Hello 2021 sales event. For a limited time, ask how to get $250 back when you add Xfinity Mobile to Xfinity Internet. This sale ends soon, so click, call, or visit a store today. Ends 11-21. New customers only. Other restrictions apply. Welcome to the Oh Hell No podcast, where I, Keisha Nicole, delivers a daily dose of passion, purpose, and struggle by interviewing people who are living their best life doing what they love. Here on this podcast, every Oh Hell No moment serves a purpose. Now let's get started with the show. to another episode of the Oh Hell No podcast. Today I have Melly Rose. <laughs> she yes. is a singer. She yes. is an island girl, Trinidad. Yes, I am. <laughs> yes, I am. Yes, and she is all about self-love and advocating for women and we love it. Oh, thank so, you. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm so grateful. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. So let's jump in. When did you decide to pursue singing as a career? So I have loved singing since I was like, I feel like all my life. Because, you know, like I grew up in church, right? Mm -hmm. So like when I was like the age of six, my dad put me in the choir. Because my I'm a PK. My dad is a pastor. Oh. So he put me in the choir and then as years go on, he had me become like choir director and just doing stuff in church, singing. And then it just was like, I would always just be walking around the house, humming something or singing something. And then um, when I moved up to the States to live with my mom, I heard um, my, my cousin, she was talking about um, Baltimore School for the Arts. And I heard about it and I was like, oh, what is this? And I went and like did my little research. I remember that. And I like called and had an application sent for me. Wow. And mind you, my mom didn't know, right? Mm. <laughs> and my mom didn't know. And she, we got it in the mail. And I remember um, we got a mail. And I'm trying to remember if she she opened it or if she just gave it to me i'm trying to remember but what i do remember is walking out the street to the, the mailbox to put it in the mailbox without my, with my without my mom right and then they sent me a, a short it's like a short term um audition for the fall because it was like not the regular auditions with everybody else it was like during the semester that we giving me the opportunity to come audition. And I remember going, I was 14 and I remember going into school for the arts and I was there and I'm like strong Trini accents and I'm there and I walk in and like these kids running around there and like they're leotards and then the kids in the hallway, like learning their lines and I'm there and I'm like, oh my God, this is like island girl, what she gonna do? <laughs> and I went in there and I sang the Trinidad and Tobago national anthem and a song I made up right wow. and I walk and it had like a line of you know it had a line of teachers that say for you to audition in front of and then I walked out I was so confident while I was singing but when I walked out my knees started knocking <laughs> I couldn't even walk down the steps I was so nervous I was so nervous but then I was like I, I was so happy because I like I did it you know what I mean right and then and then I remember getting the envelope and finding out I got accepted and my mom and everybody was just so happy and excited and I was like screaming and it just was like even with that I was just like yo this is my calling this yeah. is what I but funny enough like I fought it for a very long time hmm. because like, despite, like, I went to school for singing and stuff, I was like, okay, I'll write. I'll do writing for some years, you know what I mean? Which, that's what helped me get through college. That helped me pay for college. Right. And I was like, because I'm so quirky, you know what I mean? I have a quirky personality, a quirky dress code. It's like, mm, people going to judge me. I don't know if I want to be in the spotlight. I don't know if I want to be there, you know what I mean? Yeah. I love to just live, you know what I mean? I love the just living, you know? Right. So then, like, while I was in school, while I was in college, actually, and I was writing, my mentor 
was, um, he's actually Nigerian. He was like, you know, Melly, you're at that pivot point of like, you're about to graduate. What do you want to do with your life? Do you want to keep writing? What do you want? And I was like, you know, I've always wanted to be an artist, but I'm so scared, you know? And then he was like, you know, we don't walk in fear. You know what I mean? And then I was like, yeah, you're right. And then my aunt, um, I found out like she had like cancer. And then I was like, um, she's better now. She's no, she's cancer free. Oh, thank God. But yeah, but one of the things like, I kept thinking was like, yo, at the end of my life, I don't want to look back and didn't yeah. do what my heart desired. You know right. what I mean? You don't want to have any didn't, regrets. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? I didn't want to have no regrets. So I packed up everything, all my furniture, everything, put it in a container and shipped it to Trinidad and Tobago. And I wow. moved back. And wow. I, you moved back home? Yeah, I moved back. I'm in Trinidad right now. Mm-hmm. That is dope. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm like, I'm, I moved back and I've been here. All right, so, all right, mm-hmm. so you graduated from Morgan State University, right? Yes, yeah. What did you study while you were there? Were you studying music? And business management. I double okay. majored. Okay, mm-hmm. so music and business. Yeah, yeah. So when you yeah. moved back to Trinidad, what was your mm-hmm. plan? To pursue music out there? Were you going to do like a soca type of music? Or what was yeah. your... Okay. Yeah. So it was like, I wanted to do a fusion, right? Because when I was writing, I was writing for Afro, actually African artists. You know what I mean? My mentor who he, he had like a team of people that writes and stuff like that. So he got me involved in that writing camp and that's where that started. So I, and I listened to a lot of Afrobeats and, but I'm also Trini, you know, and I love Soka. I, I love Soka. So I was like, you know, I want to, I wanted to do a fusion, you know what I mean? I, which came up with Afro Soka. So it was like when my sound, um, when it was time for me to like move home and do music, I was like, yeah, I really want to be authentically me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I want a fusion of everything. Hence, Body Good has like a hint of Soka, a hint of um, soul, a hint of Afro. It has like everything that I yeah. am. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It incorporated me. You know what I mean? And that was very important for me. But even in that process, like when I first came home, I felt I was being forced to do more of the traditional. And I kept having to fight to try to be me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, And now I feel like I'm at the point of them just like, yo, that's Melly. She comes with heat, but she's authentically her. Yes, I and we, that. You, you know what I mean? And that, that was one of the things that, like, I felt like, and I feel like I still am to a certain extent fighting to make sure I maintain, mm-hmm. you Absolutely. know what I mean? Because to build that strong f- foundation, so you know? What, what would you say is your superpower? Um, I think my superpower is um, how I treat people. I always say like all the hype and all the fame and all the <laughs> the smoke and all the that's like frivolous if you are a bad human. You know what I mean? And I feel like you accomplish a lot more just being a good human being. Yeah. So I feel like my superpower is just being a good human. You know what I mean? And and continuously working to be a good human. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because sometimes you can lose is is you can lose the reality of the situation when the smoke is there, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So you continuously have to self-evaluate, be self-aware of the things you do and how you treat others. So I think that's, yeah. Yeah. So your new song, Body Good, is all about self-love. When Mm -hmm. did you become passionate about lacing your music with positive messages like this? Body Good came up during, like right before Corona. Mm-hmm. And it came up in the time of I came home and I felt like I was losing what my purpose was because of it have so many people that telling you what you're supposed to be, what they want to hear from you, what message you should, what you should wear, what you, although like what you should wear, I've never run with that punch they fought me a lot with that too (laughs) wait hold on let me just let me ask you one question so uh even when you were a kid you were like dressy dressy quirky 
Yeah, my niece is like that, so I just think it's so cute. My mom is like this. Okay. My mom is like funky, quirky. You get with her dress code. And then when I went off to college, I... I found me involved in the quirkiness. Mm -hmm. So that's why like, I'm always like the way how I dress is how I feel. You know what I mean? So that's why like whenever someone try to fight me on that, I fight right back because it's so me, you know what I mean? And I really don't want to be anybody else, but me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know? (laughs) So like when, like when I came here, I just felt like, I was like fighting the uphill of trying to be me and then them telling me I wouldn't be received because I'm, I'm being me. Mm -hmm. And then when Corona hit and when like, actually the beginning of this year during carnival, you know, my song, it did well this carnival. And then I was just feeling like, yo, like my purpose, I've always had a clear view of what I want for my life. You know, I've always been the, self-evaluate even when like when my mentor came and had the conversation what do you want for your life I sat down I thought about it I had a clear vision you know what I mean what I want my legacy to be what I what's my purpose you know and then I felt like it started getting muddy mm-hmm. so then when we went into the studio to create body good I was talking to one of my friends in the states who just had a kid and she was talking about how she's just not feeling like sexy or like beautiful as a woman and she's like you know how she gonna look in her carnival costume next year. And I'm like, girl, I was like, you are powerful. You just pushed out a whole baby. Right. You know what I mean? Everyone on this earth was rec- created because of you. You know what I mean? You're beautiful. Receive that. Feel that. Find a way to feel that because you are. You're amazing. And that's where Body Good came from. Because when I went and I was like, yo, like I want to play a song when a woman look in the mirror, she'd be like, I look good. Like right. I'm woman. Yeah. You know what I mean? I love myself despite what, you know what I mean? Nobody getting tell me nothing because I love <laughs> myself. Okay. And yeah. that's where a body good came from. You know what I mean? And then even, even not even just that, like I went, I started back my nonprofit. Um, I launched that again during the quarantine. Like I was like, yo, I just, I just need to get back on track with my purpose. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And my purpose has never been just to fit in and, make money and be famous no it's to help people and to build a platform that i can help more people and do more in the music and life in general you know what i mean and that's what i feel like my purpose is you know yeah so i'm like and so i just need to get back on track you know even my next song we just we actually we just shot the video for my next song um that's dropping on the 22nd and it's actually a prayer I put in the song mm-hmm. because like I was, I was talking to one of my friends in the States and I recently had someone pass from coronavirus mm. and it was just like, yo, like so many people are just losing their life. You know what I mean? And I think that I, I think that especially as a, as a human, like we, we take for granted the simple thing of just waking up in the morning. Yeah. You know what I mean? And how good God has been to us, you know what I mean? For just allowing us to wake up and see another day, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So I was just like, I want to make a song just thanking God for another day, you know? Right. And that's literally what I did. And then I sent it to my friend in Nigeria, um, Scales, and he heard it. He was like, oh my God, Melly, this song gave me goosebumps. I'm on it. That's and funny. he drops like his verse. So... Yeah, I just feel like, you know, it's just like, of course, I'm not going to say like, I'm not going to make songs that I'm going to just wild out because I'm young and I love, you know what I mean? I love vibes also, but I also know like for my platform, I I have more to do and that I want to do. So I need to make sure I'm on that path, you know? Yeah. So what is your favorite body part? Um. Funny enough, my favorite is the one when I was younger was not <laughs> my legs. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, I still don't because know what I, my favorite body part is, so I commend you. Yes. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, no. But, you, but that comes with also self-reflection. You get what I'm saying? Right, like looking yeah. up. Because when I was younger, I did not like my legs or my arms because I feel like it was so strongy. 
Mm. Like, I'm like, oh, it's so chisel. It's so, and I ain't oh, working that's out. Good. Not that's, one of y'all. that's good. That's good. That's how it's supposed to look. <laughs> You see, and I was I was not feeling that way. I was not okay. Mm-hmm. And then when I got to college, I was like, you know what? This is how God made me. I'm gonna love me and be me. And that's that's why I was just like, boom. Okay, what do I love? And I it ended up being one of my favorite parts. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> the the music industry is not for the faint of heart. What has been the biggest challenge and how are you meeting that challenge? Um, one of my biggest challenge um, was and still is support from my fellow, even friends in the industry, support from people who I look up to, support in general. Mm. Um, and how I go about that now. Um, and I think that's one of the things that... Um, was making me try to fit in because I wanted them to support me and take me in, you know? Um, But now I just don't care. Good for you. Because I feel like, I feel like it's, it's holding me back from the goal. You know what I mean? And it's like meaning like me, holding me back mentally because I'm here trying to put myself in a box Mm -hmm. to fit in when I was never meant to be in a box. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think that has been my biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's not really a challenge because it was actually me who was hindering myself. Okay. So what do you know what I mean? Because I was thinking I want to, Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, what do you look forward to the most when you think about your career? I look forward to walking in my purpose because like, you know, like when you, you have like, a a puppy or something and, or not even a puppy. Let me see. Like, well, I don't got no baby, but I'm assuming (laughs) like when you have a baby and you can just see what they can grow into. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm seeing right now. Like I'm seeing, I'm seeing all the possibilities of things and I'm seeing what I can do, you know? And it makes me so excited Yeah, because like, I like, I feel like I can make such an impact You know what I mean? I feel like I can make an impact and that in its own is just so exciting for me. You know what I mean? Because that's the purpose. That's the goal. And like, I will make it happen. That's awesome. Yeah. So what do you do to keep yourself in check in terms of authenticity and remaining true to who you are? I, for me... I I quiet the noise now. I quiet the noise, meaning like I keep a little distance from the people who always feel like I need to change my look or need to show more skin or, you know what I mean? Or people who've, who've said these comments, you know what I mean? I usually just like, I am, I surround myself with peace. Mm Mm-hmm. And people that I know will give me logical advice. Yeah. You know what I mean? And people who I know will come from a genuine space. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I also self-reflect a lot. Like if I have a, say for instance, I have a meeting and the meeting is like, you know, with the team and I'm telling them, you know, this and that could be um, thing. Before I even go into that meeting, I make sure and, and be aware of the conversation that I'm going to have with them. So I consider their feelings also because they're part of the team and also just how I approach things, you know what I mean? Because communication, as I said, the biggest thing is about being a good human. You know what I mean? Everyone has feelings. Everyone has issues in their life. Everyone has things going on. The world does not revolve around you. So I think one of the things is like, I just, I do a lot of self-reflect and I, um, I'm surrounded by beauty. I am. I'm genuinely surrounded by beauty. And that's because I make sure that. 
You know what I mean? I make sure that the people that I have in my life are like good souls, good humans, good people. You know what I mean? And a lot of times people be like, oh, that's hard to find in the industry, but they're there. You know what I mean? They're there. And you just got to find your people. Exactly. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. So what keeps you motivated about music and keeping, you know, going along with your passion to, you know, make music and, and impact the world? Like, how do you stay motivated? Because I know it can't always be easy um, in an industry like that, especially when you have to constantly be reinventing yourself, being creative, putting music out there. I'm sure there's a lot of pressure with trying to keep up, you know, especially with Soka, like every year it's a new season and you have to have new music and you have to, you know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah. how do you keep yourself motivated and, you know, up to date? Yeah. I think you should ask me that in a year from now. Let me tell you why. Because in the beginning of this year, this year here has changed my entire perspective. I don't care to keep up. I don't care to to you know what I mean fit in even body good the one before I dropped body good when we had sent it over um the producer was playing it in the studio and I had people there mm -hmm. and I heard they were saying this is not so good enough this won't fit in this won't they they had a whole long thing until it got on BT and it was saying something then they were like oh ah, oh my god oh I, I just I I no longer care I'm right. no long I no longer care about the noise i no longer care i don't care if i i, I just want to release music year round mm -hmm. i want to release music year round and i want to release it to my people so when you make music and you go against the grain how do you make money like is is it by booking appearances is it other ventures like how does that work so for me at the moment, it's like stream, streaming, oh, okay. because that's why I told you, like, there are, there are, there are your people, there, there's mm -hmm. people out there and, yeah. and locally, don't get me wrong. Like I got, I got stuff last carnival, you know what I mean? I get stuff, but it's just like, it's a little harder because my music is different. Right. You know what I mean? But outside of Trinidad and Tobago, I have my people. Like, I, in last December, I was in Nigeria. You know, we're supposed to be in Nigeria this December, mm -hmm. which I don't know if I'm going to get to go. I but, know. like, <laughs> it's just, like, it's, like, the thing about it is, like, the world, there's an entire world. If someone doesn't receive you, they're not your people. Not even saying that they're not your people. They're not your people, I guess. They've not become your fan or into you yet mm -hmm. you know what i mean because you never know in the future but you can't sit down and stay stagnant because someone don't like you at the moment right. you got to keep moving you got to get up you got to keep pushing because somewhere in the world there are your people you get and they're waiting for you yeah. so you just got to be up and about and ready to give it to them and that's one of the biggest things like i have i have i have made that life choice i'm a i'm a fighter mm -hmm. i don't give up the last mm -hmm. thing i would do is give up on myself you know what i mean because i like i as i said before like i believe i have a purpose mm -hmm. you get and i think just that in itself is a continuous um push for me Absolutely. you know it's a continuous motivation you know just to be and and it's not even i'm not even pushing for success i'm pushing to get um, a platform to be able to help more uh, uh, musically, um, charity, stuff like that. That's the stuff that I'm pushing for. And I know I need a, a solid platform in order to do these things. I want to be able to share with the world what music did for me. I always say music saved my life. You know what I mean? There's been instances in my life when I'm so down and out and music was just there. Mm -hmm. just healing my heart like I would just lay there I would cry it out I would I would go through the emotions and me it's just me and music I would sing it out even this song now the the song that I put the prayer and that's a prayer that I wake up and I sing I cry out and I sing that I put in there you know what I mean yeah and that's the thing it's like I want to share with the world what that blessing that I receive you know what I mean I want to share that kindness you know yep I yeah, so that's you. that's it. Yeah. So describe your sound um and 
you just this question is like a two-part question about like who you're making your music for like who are you wanting to connect with but you just kind of explained that it's anybody who receives the music but describe your sound right. a little bit I know you said it was like a little afro soca is that how you would describe your sound to someone who's never heard it before yeah yeah definitely it's like a fusion mm -hmm. fusion of afro and soca um yeah i i but like you know what's so crazy um body good they asked me what genre it was and i i couldn't even give it a genre yeah you know i like i couldn't even really give it a genre because like i'm an artist i go in the studio and just create you know body good was a freestyle that we turned into a song the next song is a prayer that's placed in the song you know what i mean it's just like i just create and i create right. from the heart you know so it's like i don't want to that's another box i don't even want to be put in i just want to create and let it connect with the people that's supposed to be my people yeah i feel yeah. that yeah so you talked about your other passions being um charity um and music specifically so what type of charity are you looking to do? Are you looking to um, kids um, maybe become more involved in music? Are you looking to, um, I don't know, like they have so many different things that people do around music, but what specifically are you looking to be involved in? Well, there's many different aspects. Like over during the quarantine, um, I started back my nonprofit with, um, but this one we did for the orphanage. Mm -hmm. Um, I did like, um, food clothes and food clothes and toy drive for the kids. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to do stuff with the younger ones, even in the music. I think eventually like, and that's another thing I need. That's one of the biggest things that I want to do with my platform is like raise, um, the younger artists locally, especially, because I see their struggles. I see so many talented youths mm -hmm. and they have no outlet. And the people who are supposed to be bringing them up are actually sh shooting them down. Yeah. And I like, I really eventually just wanna, like, I don't even know if it's gonna be a label, but just maybe like take up an artist one year at a time. You know right. what I mean? one year at a time. And as I grow, I would be able to help more because actually like in the Nigerian industry, that's what they do a lot. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They, they, they become big, they blow and then they take the artists, the younger ones and they blow them too. Yeah. Under yeah. them. The African music has just blown up. It's amazing. I love listening to African music. Afro See, music. and I I was there for the whole from the beginning mm -hmm. to now. Like I know exactly, like, I know exactly how like everything ended up happening, and it's so crazy. And I'm like, yo, how can we get Soka there? How can we get the Caribbean culture there also? Because Soka has been around so long, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's still not even hitting the world as much yeah. as it should be, you know what I mean? And I think that's too because we ourselves, we don't put it in the pockets where it needs to be. And that's another thing that I recently think, like, I need to even start even having more conversations with other artists about, you know? yeah. But it's a process. Everything. Uh, I'm sure. Everything, everything is just a process. Yep. You it, know? Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, this is the Oh Hell No podcast. So I always ask my guests to share an Oh Hell No moment that has um, taught them something or changed their perspective on something in life. Oh Hell No moments are daily moments. You know, um, sometimes these moments come along to push us to our next journey sometimes it comes along to teach us something but tell us a moment that happened for you where you learned something or it changed your perspective um there's so many <laughs> <laughs> yeah there are um so okay so i i wanted when i had just moved back home 
and I had dropped my first single and they were like, yo, so to do media here, you know, you just kind of have to like reach out, even if it's like people, you know, that's on air and you just reach out and you um, set up your interview. So I reached out. I was like, okay, cool. I know this person. Let me reach out. I reached out. The person was like, so I was like, hey, can I get an interview? Um, I just want to set up an interview. Um, he was like, can I take you out on a date? I was like, no. I was like, I'm spoken for. He was like, well, I guess you don't want your music played on the radio. Oh, yeah. That's a oh, hell no, girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and after that, hold on. And after that, sorry, a call just came in. And then after that, I was like, Oh, clearly I can't go directly because that is not going to happen. Okay. That was the first, that was the last. I do not, I do not go directly now. I got somebody to go set up everything after that. Yeah. You don't want to put yourself in a situation like that. I, and 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 funny enough, I was listening to an interview of a young another younger artist girl artist, and you know she's talking about how they dirtied her name in the industry and all this stuff, and like how an artist a bigger artist told her she has to like give it up to get what she needs. Yes, and I was just like, this is so horrible. Yeah, this I'm is so sure horrible. That happens. For, okay. Mm-hmm. And I think it's so horrible. I mean, but I also believe like it might be harder to get it done, but it's always better if you get it done without that that pro- that, that way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you would still have your self-respect and people will respect your name. Right. Definitely. I would say that too. Don't ever compromise your integrity for anything in life. Hello. Yeah. Hello. I agree 100. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's a oh hell no <laughs> yes it is well miss Melly rose it was a well, pleasure having you on the podcast thank you so much for coming you. on and sharing thank your journey you. with us everybody check out her single okay body good <laughs> yes yes your body good good yes <laughs> and love up on yourself because that's what it's all about yes Yes. yes. Thank you so much for having me. I so appreciate you. I'm so grateful. You know, anytime you want me back, I'm there. Absolutely. Okay. Thank Let you me know. so much. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you.